Well, let's pray and we'll get going. Amen. Father, I just thank you for victories and I thank you that you love us, Father, and I just thank you, Father, that you are just a you're just a good, good father. Lord, I ask you just minister to the hearts of people, of your people, Father, and just reveal your your direction and your your love to them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, wasn't that a great confirmation? Praise the Lord. I'm excited about that. It's answered prayer, seeing Kavanaugh come in. Amen. Praise the Lord. Mm. You're late, Sandy. <laughs> That's a $50 fine. I, I'll put it on your bill. Amen. Um, I just want to share just some of the things that the Lord has been talking to me about. I've been on this thing, and he's been just telling me how much he loves me. And uh, with that being said, if you see what's going on in society and all that, boy, howdy, what a great message to be able to portray. Because, I mean, I look at, I've watched a lot of the, and I get into it, man. I mean, I do probably too much, but I'll watch it. For hours because I just I mean it's just something that just stirs in me because it's my prayers you know these are things that I'm praying for these are things that I desire for our nation and you know things like that and, and I know you do too and, and and if you don't watch it it's okay too I understand my wife just can't stand it she has to leave you know and I'm just like why would they say that and she hates when they argue and I just pay hey, never mind you know and I, and I do some of that you know what I'm talking about but but uh I just want to, I'm thankful that, you know, what God's doing in our nation. I mean, it is really tremendous, and uh, it's blessing my heart tremendously. Um, if you would turn to Luke 7, and I want to just, I want you to just use your imagination today. And I just want you to uh, put yourself in this scriptures what it's talking about and I want you to just sit there and think about this because this is just something that the Lord spoke to me and man I have been just setting on it and setting on it and thinking about it in Luke 7 verse 37 it says this now there was a woman in the city who was known as a sinner. And when she found out that he was reclining at the table in the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster vial of perfume. And standing behind him at his feet, weeping, she began wetting his feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair, wiped them with the hair of her head and respectfully kissed his feet as an act signifying both affection and submission, and anointed them with perfume. Now when Simon the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him, that she is a notorious sinner, an outcast. Devoted to sin. Jesus answering said to the Pharisees, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he replied, Teacher, say it. A certain money lender had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had no means of repaying the debts, he freely gave, forgave them both. So which of them will love him more? Simon answered, the one I take it for whom he forgave more. And Jesus said to him, you have, decidedly, you have decided correctly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house, but you failed to extend to me the usual courtesy shown to a guest. You gave me no water for my feet, but she has wept my feet with her tears and wiped them with their hair, demonstrating 
her love. You gave me no welcoming, no welcoming kiss, but from this moment I came in, she has not ceased to kiss my feet. You did not even anoint my head with ordinary oil, but she has anointed my feet with costly and rare perfume. Therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but he who is forgiven little loves little. I know when I, when I look at my past of where I came from, I want you to know I love much. I have a lot to be thankful for. I have a lot. And what I'm getting at is here's this woman that she is considered a sinner. I mean, they are stating it. And I know that many of you may think that, you know, it's okay to look at other people and, well, I'm a little better than they are because of where I came from or whatever. But I want you to know our Father does not think that way. And I love that about him. And I'm thankful for that about him because he can take a life and change that life. And I look at like Judge Kavanaugh and what that man has gone through and all the smearing and all the things that went on against that man. And I know I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, and I started thinking about what my early days were as a young man, and I was not a very good person. Um, I tried to grope women, did all kinds of things. You know, that was the thing we did. You know, I was drunk all the time, smoked dope. You know, am I proud of those things? And I'll tell you, no, but that's not who I am. And the thing that's amazing is, is when you go back to like a, class reunions, or things like that, people still think you're that same person. And they still treat you like that same person. But that's not who I am. Thanks be to God that he can come into our heart and change our life. And from that, I'm so thankful for. And so what I'm getting at is don't forget where you came from. And I don't mean that you ponder on it and you beat yourself up over it because that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what that does in your heart is it reflects of how far you've come and that changed life and the effect of that and how that affects everything else that you do. You know, I look at my kids and my kids are just, they've done so well compared to what I did. I mean, I look at them, they didn't rebel maybe Jordan a little bit, but they love God. And it's not because I'm just this great parent. You know, we're doing this parenting, but I chose to love. And I love them, I mean, no matter what. I would pour into them. You know what I'm saying? Like my father has poured into me. You know, I love that scripture when he says, those who've sinned much, love much. I'm telling you, I love much. And sometimes it gets me in trouble because I'll sit there and I'll try to love more than somebody wants me to love them. But that's okay. It's just who I am and how I work, you know. But anyway, people who experience how much God loves them and how much they have been forgiven love much. Amen? The emphasis in the passage is not about your love for God. We sing songs all the time about how much I love God. And that's okay. I want you to know how much he loves you. That's what I'm trying to portray. Because if you get a revelation of that love, it will affect your life as it has affected my life. I mean, it has changed this life. And it will affect you the same exact way or even more which would be great with me. I don't have a problem with that. When you come into the revelation of how much you've been forgiven of all your sins, I'm telling you, my sins were very, very... I had a bunch. And I still got them. 
not as many. But the emphasis that I'm making is, and that's when the Father, when he gives me that revelation, when he said to me, from this day forward, you are righteous. And he meant that. And so I don't look at that stuff anymore. Is it still there at times? Do I fail? Yeah. I mess up. Blow it. But I'm not going to walk in condemnation. I'm not going to go there. I've chosen to say what my father says about me, that I am his child, and I am the righteousness of God, and I'm going to go just like this woman, and I'm going to get in his feet, and I'm going to tell him how thankful I am of what he's done for me. And I'm going to do that until I go to heaven, because I have experienced this love of what I'm talking about, and it's a great love. It's a powerful love, and it's a love that will change not only you, but it will change others as you let it move in you. It will make you do things that you will never, you just like, that's not who I am. I mean, Eileen, I just think of you for a moment when you took in that young man. I'm looking at Eileen Pike, and I'm like, seriously, Eileen? I mean, they're so, anyway, but she did. Because she loved. It'll make you do things that you just like, is that me? No, it's the Father. <laughs> she worshiped at his feet with all of her sin. And what did he do? He just loved her. Did he bring up her past? Did he condemn her? Did he shoot out some big scripture? No. He just loved her just sit there and let her bask in her being accepted in the beloved being a part don't run from God when you've failed but rather go to him worship him in love pour out your all to him he will not condemn you there's no more guilt no more shame, no more judgment, and no more condemnation. I want you to know when my father poured out his wrath, he poured it all out on Jesus, not on me. I'm going to let that sit there for a moment and just think about that. He paid the debt. He told me, he said, look at my hands. Look at them. Nail pierced. Do you see them? That's the price he paid. So that you could walk righteously. So that you could walk in a relationship with a God who says, I love you. And no more condemnation. No more sin consciousness. I struggle with that. Thinking I'm things that I shouldn't think. Condemning myself. Then the beautiful thing that I love about him is you get to rest in that forgiveness. I do it a lot. I bask in it. I let it just come over me and wash over me every day. You know, the purpose of the law was not to show you that you were supposed to live by it. The purpose of the law was to point you to the Savior. About 18 years ago, I don't know, it's been a long time, and this is before I ever listened to Andrew Womack. The Lord told me something, and it bothered me, and I started thinking, I'm going, he asked me this question. He said, can you live the Christian life? Are you a Christian? And I said, well, I'm a Christian. And he said, no. Can you live the Christian life? I said, God, I'm a Christian. I became a Christian. I love you. What do you mean? And then he tells me, he says, you can't do this. 
Only I can do it. And as I'm growing in this, I'm understanding at even greater and greater depths of the exchange that takes place of how the Father is uprooting those things that are not His and pulling them out and putting in the things that are His. But you have to allow that process. Is it fun? Sometimes it's not. But it's worth it. Because the life that you get to live is freedom. Freedom from that stuff. Freedom from those condemnation thoughts and those things and the shame and all that stuff that's going on. I mean, I just look at what's going on. It just, I just want to shake my head and I'm going, is there no common sense anymore? I don't mean that bad. But I look at that and I'm thinking, man. Now this woman was considered a sinner. I no longer consider myself a sinner. I want you to know that. I am now a child. I have the most high God. I am now righteous. See, the Christianity that always bothered me, and I'm being honest about this, about just how I think, was you would hear ministry about Areas of your life that you fail in. And I'm sure that each one of us could stand up and give a testimony about something we got that's wrong. That God the Father says, that ain't good. Yeah, I know. And, and when I look at Romans 3.23, it says that all have sinned. And when I make this point, I'm not trying to justify my sin... I'm just wanting everybody to know that we're all in the same ballpark. And there's only one that could commit and do what they did, and that was Jesus Christ, and he did it, and I have received fullness of what he's done in my life. And it's changed me. And it's changed you. Turn with me to Hebrews Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 12 says, Whereas Christ hath offered the one sacrifice, the all sufficient sacrifice of himself for sins for all time. He sat down, signifying the completion of atonement for sin at the right hand of God, the position of honor. Verse 14 says, For by the one offering he has perfected forever and completely, cleansed those who are being sanctified, bringing each believer to spiritual completion and maturity. It is a process. But in the Father's eyes, you are no longer a sinner. It's not of who you are. It's not as anything to do with you anymore. Why? Because of what you did with Jesus. Bring all of your shortcomings. Abandon yourself to his love and just worship him. You know, I was telling a little story about Jesus loves me. This I know. I've been singing that song. You ought to sing it and keep singing it and keep singing it until you come to that full revelation. And, you, and I, I can't say full because <laughs> his love is so great. But you get more revelation of how much he loves you. Hebrews 10 Verse 16 says, This is the covenant that I will make with them. After those days, says the Lord, I will imprint my laws upon their hearts, and on their mind I will inscribe them, producing an inward change. 
He then says, And their sins and their lawless acts I will remember no more, no longer holding them, their sins against them. No longer. Man, that's a party. It's a party. It's liberal. It's being free. Being free from the thinking that, you know what, I have to do in order to get. It's being free from what the enemy tries to do to us to, I'm going to rest and bask and set under this love like that woman. And just allow God to love me. And my job is to worship him at his feet. And to tell him, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hebrews 10 verse 19 says, Therefore, believers, since we have confidence and full freedom to enter the holy place, the place where God dwells, by means of the blood of Jesus. I want you to think about that. You have confidence and full freedom to enter the holy place, the place where God dwells, by means of the blood of Jesus, by this new and living way which he initiated and opened for us through the veil, as in the holy of holies, that is, through his flesh. And since we have a great and wonderful priest who rules over the house of God, let us approach God with a true and sincere heart in unqualified and sincere heart. Assurance of faith, having had our hearts sprinkled and clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Man. Man. No longer having a warped mind. A mind that says the wrong things. No more sin consciousness. I want to be there. I haven't arrived, but I'm heading. Amen? Second Timothy three verse one says, But understanding this, that in the last days dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come, difficult days will be hard to bear, for people will be lovers of self, narcissists, self focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed, boastful, arrogant, revilers disobedient to parents, ungrateful, holy, and profane, and they will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection, calloused and inhumane, irreconcilable, malicious, malicious, gossips, devoid of self-control, intemperate, immoral, brutal, haters of good, traitors, reckless, conceited lovers of sensual pleasures rather than lovers of God. Sounds like our society, doesn't it? We're in the last days. I know you know that, but I'm just reminding you of that. We need the manifestation of the sons of God and the daughters of God. And they're going to have to know how much God loves them. Psalms 103. It's time for my baby daily Bible reading. Psalms 103. Verse 2 says, Bless and affectionately praise the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget any of his benefits, who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you lavishly in loving kindness 
and tender mercy. That's the God I serve, who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the soaring eagle. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Man, you just want to sit there and tell him that. Just sit there and meditate on that and sit at his feet and just tell him, thank you for your benefits. Thank you for your benefits. Thank you that you've shown me loving kindness. Thank you that you've shown me mercy. Thank you that you're redeeming my life. You're changing my life. I'm no longer that person. Thank you for that. Thankfulness reminds you of all he's done. Humility is understanding that you did not accomplish these things on your own. You can't do it by yourself. And he doesn't expect that. But what he does expect is a thankful heart. A heart of gratitude. A heart that says, I love you. I love you. Thank you for what you've done for me. If you can stay right there, I'm telling you, faith works by love. Your faith level will increase. You'll do things. I mean, it'll be wonderful. One more scripture. This is Psalms 100. Verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy, which means his love, and loving kindness are everlasting. I love this. His faithfulness endures to all generations. You know, I look at my family and where I came from. And many of you, Ellie knows my family really well. Um, Nothing against my family. I love my family. They're great people. Just like everybody else's family. You all have some of those people you just want to go. But she is. Amen. Well, anyway, when I look at those things, I'm reminded of, you know what? God's going to take his love to my family and to your family for generations. You know, my son told me something that it blessed me and just rocked my world a little bit. But Jordan said to me, he said, Dad, do you realize what, how you've affected this family, by the, Linda and I, by the decisions and things that we did and made? And even though it wasn't popular or anything else, we made decisions that I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going to reap great benefits and see it from not only my kids, but my grandkids and my great-grandkids. And then I think, because, I mean, I was not raised in church, folks. I don't have a church background at all. And how you can have a God that decides to say, I want you to be a part of my family. I desire that. And I want to show you there's a better way than what you're living with and what you're doing. Amen? One more scripture. I need to shut up, but it's okay. Ephesians 3. This will bring it home for you, hopefully. Verse 19 says, And that you may come to know practically through personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled up throughout your being to all the fullness of God so that you may have the richest experience of God's presence in your lives, completely filled and flooded with God himself. That's being full of God's love. Amen? Yes. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for more revelation of how much you love us. And that, Father, because of that, it will change 
how we think of ourselves as sons and daughters. It'll give us greater boldness. And Lord, it'll affect the world that we live in. And I thank you for this now, Father, in the name of Jesus. I give you praise. Thank you for Kavanaugh, Father. I give you praise for that answered prayer, Lord. And thank you, Father, for our government, that, Lord, you're just, you're moving in that, in those areas, and you're exposing. And I thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name, amen.